trolling motor side end. Everybody says that if you turn the trolling motor, it's going to skew the end. <coughs> but the thing is about if you do a slow, steady turn, it's just like driving your boat straight. The biggest thing that I see is changing speed. If you're at 30, if you're on the trolling motor, off the trolling, motor, that you're setting that speed chart to match the speed you're going, how we were showing to get the best image. If you're doing nothing, if you're just drifting after you propel the boat, it's going to be reading at this speed. As soon as you hit that trolling motor, you're going to speed it up. So you'll see like one line, and then you're going to see that image start. You'll see that data actually start being produced again. You'll see some lines in it. But the thing is, is, is if you run at a steady speed or a steady turn, or if the wind's blowing and it's just drifting, you'll create perfect images. Uh, this is our images that's got useful data. The big thing that I like about trolling motor side imaging is when we get in shallow water. I, I'm fishing away from the boat. I'm not fishing over the top. So knowing, being able to see, we go back to the, the 2D sonar, a third of depth, or even six degree depth and three foot of water, that foot of circle is really not helping us as far as using to catch fish. It's telling us depth. The depth finder in, that, in three foot of water is basically telling us depth of what, what the water temperature is. So a Pronomax would give me the same data as a $1,198 and $3,000 if that's the water depth I'm fishing in. Being able to look at like this image, we're looking 100 covering 100 foot in 17 foot of water, gives me additional data away from the boat. This is actually schooling fish. It was on Kentucky Lake. There was actually a ledge over here. It had grass on it. You could, and I was sitting there waiting for the school. They would activate about 45 minutes to an hour. They'd go through a cycle and start feeding. You would actually start seeing a few fish come through your sonar. This is this is at zero mile an hour, no, no movement. This is the fish making the movement, not the trolling. So these fish are swimming under the transducer through the cone angle, creating their own return. What, the, what those fish were doing after I started realizing, they would bust over here, it would calm down. You would see four or five, six fish go through here. Then, the, all of, then 15 minutes later, you'd start seeing bait fish come swimming through here. And then you'd see those five or six fish, and then you would have a heyday going on because they would go out over deep water, start moving. They were like a cowboy herding up cattle. They would herd them bait fish and move to the shallow water and they'd start blowing up. When they got to the grass, everybody else started feeding frenzy. I hope they probably hadn't sent the younger guys out there so the old guys could sit there and just munch them. Uh, this is actually a situation, uh, it's an interesting story behind it because I went, I went out on Truman Lake, had about three hours one afternoon. There was a tournament. Stopped by, seen some guys, said, man, it is horrible. Weights were way off. Nobody caught any fish. They said, you're wasting your time putting your boat in. They ain't fighting. I went out. It was free spawn. The lake, they were pulling the lake. They were just about to go on the beds. They started pulling the water, and the fish left the beds. They left their spawning area. I stubborn, hard-headed, started throwing a spinner bait, started throwing the jig along the bank. I said, I might as well turn on my side in. This is actually from an old 797 C2, so that that goes back as, as kind of my first experiences with this. But I found this school here, actually had it on 2D and had it on side imaging at the same time. There's my school of fish. What was interesting, if, if you were on the lake, right over here is a spawning pot, a little small spawning pot. This is a this is actually a river channel right here. When they pulled water, those fish pulled out to the channel. You turn around, I threw, threw a crankbait and a swimbait, caught 23 fish in three different pockets that I found just like that from three and a half to six pounds. And that was the worst. And everybody told me to keep my boat on the trailer. But using your side imaging, this is where I learned. To start believing my side imaging unit could produce fish for uh, The data that you're getting on the screen, if you can set it up to get that data with the tips that I've been giving you, 
will help you see these fish and, and recognize what the fish look like. The next thing is take your skills and then and then start catching them and have them have those those memories of a lifetime. This is one of the I'm a I'm a shallow water power fisherman. I love throwing a square bill in less than three foot of water. To me, 2D sonar is useless in 1.6 foot of water. That's 18 inches. So 20 degree sonar, I had a six inch cup. I would I mean that ain't even as big as that square. So it's not being useful as far as fish finding stuff. <clears throat> there is no bass in this image. But the thing that I found, I started seeing was this was the first thing I started seeing because this is my oldest data. At this point right here is where the fish catch happened. I started recognizing this as a stump underneath the water. It was not exposed above water. The other thing is you can see this school of bait here. This is my the famous one. I call this the Batman school of bait fish. The bait fish are actually right here. The, return, the shadow from it actually looks like a bat up here. There's actually a school here and a school here so we can see the shadows from it. The trolling motor actually turned just a little bit right here. And then I finished it after I caught, caught this fish here off of that stump. But just by recognizing this, that technique, uh, if I go back here, if you look at the water temperature, we're dealing with 90 degree water temperature. That technique, basically those fish are, are basically, that is their home. They live pretty much on this stone. Uh, the reason they can survive is they got food here, they got food here, and they got cover. Their fish are cold cold-blooded animals, so they don't know how hot it's hot and how cold it's cold. It, they're more activated by the, where food is. You know, if you get hungry, drive by McDonald's, you pull in. But those, that fish was probably sitting there because those schools were made there. When they made this mistake and come up and got too close to here, he ate them. But, but being able to find detail like this, you would have never found that with 2D sonar in a six inch of the and being totally exposed underneath the water. If you look at it, we've actually got one big stump here and a second stump here. You can see that little sliver of data right through there. There's actually two stumps. Then sometimes it's just easy to find fish. <laughs> this is actually a friend of mine in Georgia. These are actually stripers. But the, the thing that just amazes me is you look at that and that almost looks like a tornado of fish. Yeah. You can tell that those things are actively moving around and feeding. You got fish all over the place. Same thing as a down energy picture. This is actually <coughs> a different school. But if you look here, you can see these fish are sitting horizontal. These fish are actually moving straight up. These fish are starting to move. It looks like they just keep moving this way. It looks like it's in motion. But you can start actually look at this fish here. You can tell the wider part here, that's his head, that's his tail. You can actually start telling the direction. If it believe you, it'll reward you. This is actually the first the, the first week I really believed what side imaging on a trolling motor could do for me. I was fishing the Mobile Delta Strength Championship. I qualified for it. The Delta had been in a drought. They had a saltwater intrusion from the tidal flow. 100 miles up, the fish were sluggish. You had to, I, I targeted basically lay downs and stumps and hit them with a crankbait to, to get them to react. They were biting out of, uh, more defensive than, than eating the food. But the thing was, was the first two days, that tidal water, when I actually found those fish, I could see the stumps in the logs. When the tournament started, those logs, the tide was up and the logs were underneath the water. I did not, I could not see him. So what I did was I took my trolling motor in a slow, steady turn, like that tree that's right over there, I did a slow, steady turn of that thing. And when that signal hit, I could see that white, strong return from that stump. And I would stop my trolling motor and look at the arrow and start casting. Sometimes you'd hit it on the first cast, sometimes it maybe took 50 casts, depending on the size of it. When it hit it, I was able to catch fish off of it. First two days I had side imaging. The second two days you have to use sponsor boats, and they didn't have side imaging. And I did very poorly if you look at the results on day three and day four. 
that was that was twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> this is uh, basically some contact. This is my personal website. I've got a lot of Humminbird information on there. Bass Boat Central. We have two forms on there. I moderate them. Uh, we've got one that is just image interpretations. You can post an image. We, we'll tell you about it. Or there will be people from all over the world tell you about it. And then the Yahoo site imaging group. Do you have any questions? Or, uh, you asked about water clarity. Yeah. Sonar don't know the difference between mud or mud or clear water. Okay. The only thing I can tell you is that extremely muddy water, if it's got turbulence in it, air bubbles. Lots of return. You'll get you'll pick up more clutter in it, but you'll you can still see through that clutter. <coughs> An interesting one is like when Truman is pulling you know, if it pulls water off of the surface over the spillway, the water moves across the top. It don't the water at the dam yeah. don't move, the next water don't keep filling in. It's it's basically moving horizontally across the lake. You'll actually see like a milky it almost looks like somebody poured milk and coffee. Uh, Just a light haze up at the top. Yeah. But you'll have picture perfect images underneath it. And it's the same thing with thermoclines, uh, or there's basically different water temperatures, we call them different climes. A thermocline is the absence of air, but you'll have temperature climes where the water temperature will be different at a different level. And then you'll actually, through your sensitivity settings on 2D down imaging, side imaging, actually the down imaging and side imaging show a climb amazing. You'll actually see that clutter in the coming up and it'll be cleaner in the water. Because of the difference in the density of the yeah. water.